A little-known witness named Raymond Feehan came next and may have been doomed for Alger Hiss. He testified in substance as follows. My name is Raymond Feehan. I work for the FBI. I'm a member of a profession called the Examination of Questioned Documents. I'm an expert in, among other things, typed documents. I've worked in tens of thousands of documents and testified in court many times. And I'm going to hit the pause button on Mr. Feehan's testimony for a minute and note a few things about typewriters. We're back in the days of the old days, the old, old days of manual typewriters like this one. And the typewriter in this case was made in the late 1920s, almost certainly in 1929, by the Woodstock Typewriter Company of Woodstock, Illinois. Now this is long before today's laptops and handheld things where you've got 50 different choices of font and 25 different sizes. There's one, here's the N key, there's one N in this typewriter and it looks like whatever is on the end of here. This is the only N that this typewriter is ever going to type, this shape and that size unless somebody pulls this out and puts in a, a different one. Um, and typewriter makers changed the letters, a couple of letters, a little bit every year. Um, just like car makers make a few changes in every model every year. I have a friend who's a car buff and a car can go by at 40 miles an hour and he'll tell me exactly what, you know, that's a 2008 Plymouth XYZ, who's he, what's it model, and I'll say, how do you know that? And he said, it's the only make, model, and year that they had that front grille, those hubcaps, and that setup of parking lights. Similarly, a typewriter expert like Mr. Feehan could look at a type document and often say with great certainty, I am certain this was typed on a 1941 Smith Corona presidential model because that's the only make, year, and model that had this C and that N and that T and that capital J. Also like cars, these old manual typewriters have a lot of moving parts. To type on a piece of paper, you had to put the piece of paper in the roller and then hit a, one of these things called a key and a lot of levers inside there move and eventually this arm starts to come up and the letter goes wham on the typewriter ribbon and put some ink on the paper you put in there. Over the years, millions of these movements occur, and the typewriter gets picked up and put down and moved around, and people spill coffee on it and whack it when they get angry. And all these moving parts get a little loose. And also, I, uh, I remember when I used to type stuff on these typewriters, sometimes a non-expert typist hits two keys at the same time and they both come up and bang against each other and one chips the other a little bit and the other knocks the one a little off center. And over the years, each typewriter develops its own unique collection of what I'll call peculiarities of type. Just like uh, every car I've ever owned after a few years, it's got a few nicks and spots and this button you really have to push hard and that handle wobbles. Finally, each person types slightly differently and sometimes in the eyes of an expert like Mr. Feehan on an old manual like this one, a tall person's typing looks different from a short person's typing, right-handed person, left-handed person, their typing looks different. Somebody who types by the touch method or somebody who does hunt and peck, their typing looks different. And sometimes someone like him, an expert, can tell whether two documents were typed by the same typist. Anyway, back to Mr. Feehan. He says to the jury, before Woodstock 230099 was found in the night watchman's house, in the last days of the grand jury, I was brought in on this case on very short notice, and I was asked to bring my expert skills to bear on the question of whether a certain pile of typed documents, which I will call the typed spy documents, were typed on a typewriter that the Hisses had at home in 1938, which I will call the Hiss Home Typewriter. Well, it would have been nice if we had the Hiss Home Typewriter, but at that point we didn't. But we had something just as good. We had four documents that we knew had been typed on the Hiss Home Typewriter. Sort of like if you wanted to know if the fingerprints on this cup were mine, you could tell that by getting my finger, which would be like having the typewriter, or you could compare the fingerprints here with my fingerprints in the files of the FBI. That's like the, 
the documents we know were typed on the Hiss home typewriter, which I, and which I will call the Hiss standards. So for me, oh, and by the way, the Hiss standards were we found a letter that Mrs. Hiss's sister Daisy typed on it in 1931, a lengthy description of the personality of Mrs. Hiss's son by her first marriage, which was prepared for a private school he was going to. Mrs. Hiss was the head of the Bryn Mawr Alumni Association of Washington in 1936 and 37, and we found a, uh, an annual report, she wrote. She typed on a Woodstock typewriter in the files of Bryn Mawr in May 1937. And we also found a letter she typed in 1937, this is right in the middle of when the spying was supposedly going on, that she sent to the University of Maryland in connection with this inorganic chemistry course that she wanted to go to. So these I will call the Hiss standards. And for me, the question became, were the spy documents and the Hiss standards typed on the same typewriter? In order to answer that question, um, I followed the standard procedure in the profession. That is, I made copies of the Hiss standards, blown up several times the original size, got out my magnifying glass, and I looked for peculiarities of type, little nicks and scratches. And I found 10. For example, we have the word together here in this Hiss standard. The letter G, lowercase g, the bottom is an oval, and the right side should be a nice smooth semicircle. But as you can see here, this G has been dented, number one. Number two, the lowercase e, also in the word together, it should, if when it comes out of the factory, it should just go in a nice round circle until it stops in midair, but you can see here it's suddenly been thrust inward and upward in a straight line. These are both probably the result of being nicked when somebody hits two keys at the same time. Third, in the word application, you can see, the, if you look closely, the, lower, the lowercase i is always a little lower than the other letters on the same line. And finally, in the word today and elsewhere, the lowercase o is a little thin on one side and a little thick on the other side. Then, uh, and I went on, so on and so on, for a total of 10 peculiarities of type I found in the Hiss standards. Then I made copies of the spy documents, and here's a blow up of one of them. Several times the original size, got out my magnifying glass, looked for peculiarities of type, and I found in the spy documents all ten of the peculiarities of type I'd found in the Hiss standards. Here's the dent in the G, the last part of the E thrust inward and upward, the lowercase i a little lower than the other letters in the same line, and the O that's a little thin and a little thick. The odds that two different typewriters will have ten identical peculiarities of type are like one in ten trillion. I'm not stating it as a fact, it's just an opinion, but it's my expert opinion that these two sets of documents, the his standards and the spy documents, were typed on the same typewriter. And Feehan did not have to say it, but it, he didn't say it, he didn't have to, it was pretty clear to the jury, I'm sure. Since we know the Hiss standards were typed on the Hiss home typewriter, we know the spy documents were typed on the Hiss home typewriter. I should mention there was one of the spy documents that they excluded because it was obviously not typed on the Hiss home typewriter. It was a different kind of typewriter on government paper, so it's 64 spy documents were definitely typed on the Hiss home typewriter. At the first trial, Lloyd Paul Stryker, Hiss's lawyer, did not ask Feehan a single question on cross-examination. At the second trial, Feehan was asked only a few inconsequential ones. Also, at the second trial, Hiss's lawyer went further than Feehan and told the jury not only were they typed on the same typewriter, but he said, we have consulted some experts and they say that in their opinion the spy documents were done on the Woodstock typewriter, and he meant 230099. Mr. Feehan spoke in plain English with very little technical jargon. 
I think he was on the witness stand for about as much time as I've been talking for him. And he posed to the Hiss defense a question it had to answer, which is how can 64 pages of documents, obviously prepared for spying, get typed on the home typewriter of an innocent man? <laughs>